What's up, y'all? It's your boy, eBay Fight Predictions in the building. And this is your top five threats in every single weight class, but we're at 145. So that means top five threats to Alexander Volkanovsky uh, of 2022. Um, I've been waiting to do a video like this about Alexander in this 145 division because it's changed up a lot. I think there are going to be some similar names that you will see from last year's but uh, it's changed up and i've actually kind of changed my mind on on certain things i gotta check out who i put at number one i might have put brian ortega i might have put brian ortega last year but it, i'm gonna see that list but um but yeah man alexander volkanovsky let's talk about the champ man he is the guy like this guy is the epitome of workhorse uh, he is good in every single aspect of MMA. Maybe you could say he doesn't submit anybody, but that's about it, man. His grappling's A1, his striking, uh, his striking's A1. Um, he, when, when I watch him compete, it's, it's like, man, like, uh, he's great. He, he, uh, the way he uses his feints, the way he uses his leg kicks from just the lead leg, and then when you're used to him throwing leg kicks to, from the lead leg, he switches it up and throws it to, uh, from the, for obviously from the opposite leg. But he's just so good. He's so good at mixing things up, and he can wrestle. You know, he's just a well-rounded fighter. I really tru truly believe this. Uh, I think a, back in the day, I think Frankie Edgar, Chad Mendez, you know, had donated their fucking DNA to science. Uh, obviously, went to the Australian de science department, and they made fucking Alexander Volkanovsky because he's the best of both worlds when it comes to Chad Mendez and Frankie Edgar. You know, he has it feels like he has Frankie Edgar's cardio, but he doesn't have that crazy, crazy Frankie Edgar cardio. Uh, and he has that like almost like Chad Mendez power, right? But not the like all the way Chad Mendes power where like his power almost takes away his gas tank. It's like he has the best of both worlds. He's better than Frankie because I feel like he's a lot more cleaner and he has Frankie's durability, right? Like he has the like I feel like he has the speed of Chad. I just, you know, it is what it is. I don't want to go too too in depth with this little conspiracy theory. But still, he's just really he is he's really great. He's a great fighter. And um I've been a fan of him for a long long time. Uh, the only time I've ever actually counted him out was against Chad Mendez, but Chad's my guy. Um, I've been really impressed with Volk, man. I really have. And I just, there's a few guys I can see actually beating him. But right now, it, uh, it's going to be a fucking problem. It's a hard fight. But... Uh, let's get to the top five, though. Enough about Volk, man. He's a great fighter, though. And you know what? Let, let, one thing I want to say is he, he really showed his stride against fucking uh, Brian Ortega, man. He let motherfuckers know uh, what kind of guy he was. And I, I was so impressed with him, man. He really put it on Ortega. But, uh, but yeah, man, let's get to the top five. At number five, this might be surprising, but I actually think this guy has a really good chance of actually beating Alexander Volkanovsky. Is Ilya Taporia. I know he's, I think he's ranked number 15. And his last fight was at 155 against Jai Herbert. Uh, and then he, as his last 145 fight was at, against Ryan Hall. So, n he hasn't beat the greatest guys. But, I mean, Damon Jackson beat Mursard Be uh, Bektik. And I think on a two-fight, one streak. So, I'm just saying. But, um, I'm not going to say the kid is there yet. But I think he has the potential to be there. And I think if he has the right fights, if he does the thing... Things I think he will do against guys like Mozart Evloev, um, against guys like Calvin Cade, or against those top five guys who uh, who I think he can match up well with. Um, I, I honestly think he could really knock out Alexander Volkanovsky. I think he has the potential to. I don't know if he will, but I really do think I'm really high on Ilya Taporia. Uh, I think his wrestling is good. I think his his boxing is good. The only place I think he would have to improving uh improve in is his muay thai awareness his kickboxing awareness and maybe some uh, some of his kickboxing fundamentals uh i think uh i think he box and wrestles a little too much i feel like jai showed a really good game plan if you're a tall rangy guy that kicks the knees up the middle really good he got caught with so many things because he kept moving his head and dipping his head to certain angles as if he was as if he was Canelo, you know, boxing out there. So uh, I think that's his number one issue is that uh, 
he needs to learn some of the fun. I, I know he knows the fundamentals, but uh, he needs to needs to rework some of those holes because you know you can't move your head down like that. Now I'll never forget Dan Hooker explained it when he fought Ross Pearson. Like Ross has really good head movement for boxing, but someone throws a, a fucking knee down the middle and you dip your head as if you're like gonna like get away from a hook and you eat a knee to the dome piece and you're actually moving your head towards that direction. You know the speed of how your head's moving down. Uh, going, t you know, towards the knee and the knee coming up with that like momentum, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna end badly. And he got caught with a beautiful lead high kick too, uh, from Jai. So he's gonna have to work on some of his fundamentals. But if I'm talking about durability wise, wrestling wise, and boxing wise, he matches up really well with Volkanovski, and I think he has a lot of potential to be a prom. Uh, but yeah, at number four, I had to go with the main man. Uh, the savior of the featherweight division, the guy that put Giga in his place, Calvin Cater. Um, this guy, man, I, Cater's my guy, bro. Cater is my fucking boy, bro. Uh, I got a lot of respect for him, man. I think he can give Volk some problems. Obviously, I do think Volk beats him, but, man, uh, stylistically, he has really good boxing. He can wrestle. He's well-rounded. And I think Volk would only have one advantage in one area, I would say. Because besides that, every area I would say they match up pretty well would probably be the the leg kicks. I think the leg kicks are there for him. I know against, um, what's his name, against Giga, it seemed like he kind of corrected that mistake. But, you know, that Renato Mokayo fight still exists. And Mokayo was able to use that against him. Uh, I thought Jeremy did really well against Cater, too. I remember that. Like, a lot of people don't give Jeremy enough credit for that. But, uh... And, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I, I would say Cater has a durability advantage over Volk. But uh, I think Volk could outpoint him for five rounds. But it would be a fucking banger of a fight if they did if it did end up happening. Uh, but at number three, a guy I actually really think has a good chance of beating Volk, Josh Emmett. It's that power thing. You know, I, I'm putting a lot of guys with a lot of power uh, that have an advantage. Because, you know, if you're able to catch him... Man, it's over. It's like very few guys can outpoint Volk, and I don't know if I see any of that. Like very few, very few, because he's just such a high output fighter, and it's hard to just yeah, it's hard to beat him in a decision. He just knows how to win. He knows how to outpoint you, and he knows how to outwork you. He knows how to beat you. I think you gotta catch him. And Josh Emmett, I mean, he started off as an actual wrestler uh, in the beginning of his life. And uh, going into MMA, I, I've, I've never really see, saw him shoot for a takedown. I guess against Michael Johnson. I remember earlier in that fight, he was shooting for a takedown. And Michael was winning the whole fight. I'll never forget this. And he fucking clocked him in the last minute of that fight. Uh, but ever since that Jeremy Stevens fight for Josh Emmett, he's really improved. He's really shown me uh, something. And, um, I mean, he did have problems with Dan Ige. Uh, and also, Josh Emmett has a suspect chin. So, I, what I say... Josh Emmett's more durable than Volk? No, I actually wouldn't say that. I actually think, man, Josh Emmett took a lot of damage from Jeremy. It's been a while, and it seems like he's recovered well from it. But, man, he got his... Dude, he almost died. You know, that's how bad... He, he probably would have retired. He had to get, like, walked out of a stretcher, you know? Uh, that was horrible. So, but he's he's rebounded really well since that fight. And um, I, th I think Volk would have to be very careful with him. That's a hard fight for Volk, real talk. Like, real talk. Stylistically, that's a very hard fight for Volk. I don't know if he could take him down. He could try. And, like, if he throws leg kicks and doesn't set it up, he could get clocked at that overhand. And, and dude, Josh Emmett has the best overhand in MMA right now. It's so clean. It's so clean. But, um, but yeah. Uh, at number two, I got to put the main man himself, uh, the... <laughs> You know, to the public, uh, the real champ of the division, 145, uh, Max Holloway. I don't consider him that. You already know how I feel about Max, but, I, you know, I'm going to try to be nice uh, here. I think Max, like I said earlier in this video, I said there's very few guys that can actually try to outpoint and beat uh, Volkanovski in, uh, in a decision. And I think Max has that ability. I, I give Max his credit where credit is due he improved a lot since the first fight with volk i thought volk 5 0 would him uh you could say 4-1 uh in the first fight and then he turned it into a 3-2 uh 48 47 fight even though i feel like when i first watched it i'm not gonna lie i actually thought maybe max had won it 
Uh, I watched it again and I was like, yeah, nah, I can see, I can see Volk winning this fight. Um, but my thing is, I give, I give him credit. He he made the fight more competitive the second time around uh, against Volk, and I, I I can respect that. I can respect that a lot, actually. Um, I still think Volk beats him. I think Max actually took so much damage in that Yair Rodriguez fight. It's insane. Like, people don't realize. He was getting fucking high kicked and fucking one two roundhouse kick to the fucking face. Like, like, dude, he was getting beat up, you know? And he took a lot of nasty shots. If Volk can fucking touch him on the chin one good time in the trilogy, if, they, if, if it happens, just gonna say that. Dude, it's over for him. It's fucking over. He can't just take damage like this. Eventually, the chin is going to crack. Now, it hasn't cracked yet, and I don't know if Volk can do it. But if there ever is a guy that could do it, it's Volk, right? And I make this comparison. Frankie Edgar versus BJ Penn. Eventually, Frankie ended up finishing him, right? The first fight was super, super close. It was close. It was a close fight, right? I still, I, I feel like Frankie clearly won, but some people thought BJ won for some weird reason, right? Um... I think, in my humble opinion, I think Volk will eventually finish Max, but the f the second fight was close. So, I, I will give him credit there uh, for making a fight close, you know, because I don't want to make his fucking fan base cry. The last time, dude, Yair versus Max Holloway fight week will be probably the most legendary fight week of this channel because, man, they were fucking pissed. <laughs> Those fanboys were pissed, you know, but... It is what it is. And at number one, the number one threat to Alexander Volkanovsky is the Korean Zombie. If you go check out my breakdown, obviously I am picking Alexander Volkanovsky to beat him. But that's because clearly, I like both of them, but clearly Volkanovsky is my guy. But if I'm being honest, if, if, if there wasn't a bias uh, in that situation, I'm being honest with you, I'd probably pick Alexander, or not Alexander Volkanovsky probably pick korean zombie to get it done i think this is a legit upset waiting to happen and it's insane let's not forget you guys you guys even i kind of thought it in my head after the volk versus max holloway fight the second one everyone was saying zombie would ko volk they said it they said it all right like everyone knows it okay but after zombie got dealt with from ortega that fucking opinion went away. And what Zombie was able to do to Ige, I'm hearing everyone saying it was a bad performance. It was one of his best performances ever. He took no damage. He outgrappled a former wrestler, D2 wrestler and Dan Ige. And in my humble opinion, that's Ige's fucking, you know, that's his prowess right there. That's where he started from, right? He's a good wrestler, right? And he got outgrappled in those, uh, in, in that fight, you know? And the way he matches up with Volkanovski, he can do a lot of damage. He hits hard. He has good submissions. Um, he will have the reach advantage, which Volk hasn't had. Uh, or, I mean, Volk hasn't had the reach disadvantage in his last five fights. You know, I talk more about it in my breakdown, so go check that out. But, man, this is an incredibly close fight. Give Zombie his respect. Give him his respect. I think Zombie's a great fighter. All right? And I think he has a real chance of winning this fight. But if Zombie loses, it's not because he's washed or he's not great. It's because there's a reason why they call Alexander the Great. There's a reason why his nickname is the Great. Because he beats great fighters. And that's what Alexander does. That's what kind, the kind of guy he is. You know, so can't wait for the fight. It's going to be great. Love y'all. Goodbye. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram and my Twitter. Uh, see y'all. I love y'all.